So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to this webinar with the topic Myopia Management Redefined. And my name is Philipp Hessler, and I'm optometrist and researcher at Ernst Abbey University of Applied Sciences in Jena, Germany. And it's an honor for me to talk about the new Oculus Myopia Master today. I've had the great pleasure of testing the Myopia Master for several months now. And today I would like to introduce you to some of the key features that make myopia management more professional in practice. Yeah, I'm very grateful that the International Myopia Institute has defined some guidelines in a white paper at the beginning of 2019 on the content of optometric examination in myopic patients. And we see um, that's history taking, refraction, um, binocular vision and accommodation, visual acuity, anterior eye health, um, intraocular pressure, fundus examination, and last but not least, um, the axial length measurement. And axial length measurement is the primary outcome measure for myopia. And this is what we'll be looking at in the slides that follow. Yeah, the importance of axial length we all know that an extension of the eye of one millimeter causes a myopia increase of just under three diopters. And now the rhetorical question arises, what is worse, the 2.7 diopters or a one millimeter longer eye? And for the child and the parents, this is often the, uh, the value 2.7, but for us as specialists, the one millimeter should be of much greater importance. And this is because the posterior eye segment is stressed by shear and tensile forces, which can lead to pathological side effects. Yeah, the advantages of axial length measurement with the myopia master. We have an optical measurement without touching the cornea that is completely independent of accommodation status. So myopia control can be performed without any cycloplegic side effects. After refractive surgery, we no longer know what the status of the eye is. And the same applies after orthokeratology care, which is an important care option in myopia. Yeah, there are some secondary diseases um, in high myopia and um, that are, for example, maculopathy, um, corridor neovascularization, staphyloma, retinal detachment, glaucoma, or cataract. And because of that, um, the definition changes a little bit in the past. And uh, in the past, uh, high myopia was often referred to as refractive error of above six diopters. And today, some experts like to speak of high myopia from an axial length of 26 millimeter or more, as the risk of pathological consequences is greatly increased from this length. Yeah, after this brief introduction of the basic, I would like to start a new era with you in myopia control and introduce the new Oculus Myopia Master. The Myopia Master is a new standard in myopia control and it incorporates all FDA mandated criteria for a complete myopia control. And these are refraction that is dependent on accommodation, um, that is axial length, that is independent of accommodation and daily constitution. And we have keratometry values to get out the refractive power of the cornea. What I find particularly nice is that Oculus has developed some software to document further risk factors and to carry out a progression analysis. And let us now take a brief look at the displays of the Myopia Master. And at first you can select several measurement modes uh, navigation of measurement is very simple and self-explanatory as you know it from other Oculus devices, for example, such as the Kirtograph 5M. And in addition, the measurement is very, very fast and not invasive. After measurement, we see the result display here, the first result display, and we have here general data, objective uh, refraction data, and then we have these images here of the eye. And there must be also a rethink with the patient and our communication. 
eye specialists usually only talk about diopters, but we have to start talking to him or to the customer about millimeter values, um, whether he wants to or not, because we have to make it clear to the patient that length growth, growth is important. And this picture helps to do that. And this is also another advantage because most patients do not understand the unit diopters at all, but every child knows the unit millimeter. Yeah, we have uh, the result values here and the values for central corneal radii. In this display, we see uh, the traffic light color bars. And I experience every day that we talk a lot about myopia, but the parents don't understand the relevance of myopia control. And with these uh, traffic lights, this uh, is really clear that um, green is no risk and uh, yellow moderate risk and red high risk. Myopia prevention highly should be recommended if we have here um, some high risk factors. In the next display, we see a possibility to present a prognosis and we see standard data for axial length as a function of the age. And I will discuss this in more detail in the course of this lecture. Yeah, Myopia Master is perfect as standalone device, um, which means you don't have to connect it to a computer. But however, if you connect it to the computer, you will enjoy the Myopia Master software and it offers many great features that take this device to the next level. And now I would like to introduce you to uh, two cases to show you the software. And this is how the result display of the PC software looks like. And first we have some objective parameters, um, the axial length, the refraction, and I also can add subjective refraction data. Um, furthermore, the curatometer values are displayed. And our first case is Clara. And Clara is six years old and came to see me a few weeks ago. It's interesting how Clara came to me. And Clara has an older sister. This is Anna. And Anna has been in myopic control for several years now. And it's currently, and she's currently wearing multifocal contact lenses. A few weeks ago, Anna had a contact lens check and Clara was with her. I spoke directly to their mother and we took a measurement on Clara. And this is a very important way to get myopic uh, or myopia control patients because we actually want to have them with us even before the onset of myopia. And this was successful in the case of Clara. And I only can give you the tip, take and talk to your myopic mothers as well as to the mothers of myopic children if there are any brothers or sisters. And if we look at the values, we see in the refraction zero diopters. So what do you think? Perfect, right? And no, this is absolutely not perfect at all. Zero diopters at the age of six is not normal at all. And at uh, this age, we would expect a slight hyperopia. And in this context, there is a new definition by the International Myopia Institute, and this is pre-myopia. Pre-myopia means a child at the age of six years and a refractive error of less than uh, plus 0.75 diopters is already as good as myopic. And this value decreases with increasing age. An 11-year-old immatropic child is pre-myopic. And this is really, really a very important definition, pre-myopia. And next, we turn to the diagram. And here we see the progress and forecast display. And this is ethnic-specific and gender-specific. In this case, it's a Caucasian eye. And what does this diagram tell us? Clara's axial length is very, very high for her age. And if you follow the percentile curve, Clara will be probably be short-sighted over six diopters at adulthood. And it's very impressive, isn't it? And that's uh, what I mean by predicting amitropia, even though it isn't there yet. And this is really a great feature of Myopia Master. 
And without this device, parents would never have understood the importance of starting preventive actions right now, because with zero diopters, usually QG is excellent, isn't it? Yeah, we have here uh, below the traffic light color bar for uh, the general risk evaluation. If we click here on risk factors, uh, we see this display and we already uh, may have be entered uh, the risk factors at the device or you can do it with the patients together on the large uh, computer display. On the computer, it's a little bit more playful. For example, when I look at outdoor activity, um, we have here uh, this curve and the emoji that laughs or uh, cries. Yes, um, and this is uh, a little bit more playful. Near work, you can uh, classify it just um, with a mean distance and mean um, hours per day or you can go into more detail if you want, just if you want. Um, you can um, put in the uh, distance for computer, reading a book magazine or smartphone tablet use uh, in combination with the hours per day. And we have uh, the term diopter hours that plays an important role here. And this means that time is associated with the accommodative demand. And the last display of the PC software deals with recommendations and what are we going to do with little Clara? Uh, we can hardly make her also keratology contact lenses in this case. And now you have to know that Clara has problems with accommodation. And accommodation amplitude was five to six diopters. And that's not good enough for age. Uh, and uh, the associated effort in proximity uh, could promote the development of myopia. And that's why we're going to give her a plus lens ad to help her with accommodation. And what we also recommend, of course, are the soft factors on the right side here. Um, for example, more outdoor activity, less reading time, um, and reading distance should be higher, and so on. And we are done with this. Um, I can enter the next examination date here below, um, which can be sent as an iCall file directly by email. And I can also create a myopia report, which I can either print out or send by email. So we have looked at the first features of the software and I hope, really hope you like it. Yeah, our second case is Marian. And I would like to show you some other factors or um, advantages of the PC software. Marian is a 12-year-old child and actually in a typical myopia control case. He has about minus two and the prognosis of Marian um, is that myopia will increase. And I have uh, used the percentile codes for Asian eyes here that are um, developed by the Brian Holden Vision Institute. And um, it's a very interesting point because Oculus has a cooperation with the Brian Holden Vision Institute that is a really, really um, well-known institute with a lot of experience in myopia and um, everything that deals with myopia prevention and myopia studies and so on. And this percentile curves were calculated of a large da data set of um, Brian Holden Vision Institute. So Marian, yes, what will we expect? You will get nearly minus six, isn't it? Very, very high. Yeah, the risk analysis is that he has two myopic parents and it's really a risk candidate for myopia progression. And now we look at the treatment. So in Marion's case, we started an orthokeratology care. And in addition, um, as always, we gave him some lifestyle recommendations. Here we see how to manage the treatment in the prediction display. And then we, if we click on these sliders, 
this field opens and here we can choose between various uh, supply options below or create an option ourselves and uh, set a start and end date. And then the period of the treatment is highlighted in a definable color. And in this case, we see this in the gray shaded area here. So if uh, I want to add another treatment, for example, atropine, to increase the therapeutic effect, I can do this at any time and set a different color for it. And in this way, I can monitor all the time the effect of each treatment on the axial length growth of the eye. And in this case, our therapy has an excellent effect. On the one hand, we see that uh, the fraction is approximately zero. Um, and on the other hand, we see that the prognosis has not been confirmed and the growth in axial length has remained largely stable. And if the success of the therapy should remain in Marion's case the same as in the last nine months, the axial length growth would uh, hardly change and the amotropia would be at minus two diopters after the end of orthokeratology therapy. And uh, this is exactly the power that Marion had in the baseline examination. And this is how myopia control has to work. It's really, really amazing. And another novelty is the myopia report. And this one is based on the dry eye report in the Oculus Keratograph 5M, for example, which you may know. And we see the basic information about the patient, um, measurement data, and also this diagrams here, progression diagrams. Um, and what you see here are the risk factors with the uh, uh, color bars and what is very nice as well is that you can add another risk factors in the software. For example, as ACA, a very important risk factor that may be elevated before myopia formation. And we have two um, pages with uh, explanation of uh, myopia or information about myopia progression and the consequences that can occur in connection with myopia. Here in the Myopia Master, um, we can do a very nice risk assessment and we have got the subjective values as questionnaire values, age, ethnicity, genetics, time outdoors, near work or near work distance in combination with objective values, for example, refractive error, axial length, accommodation, virgins and binocular vision, ACA and so on. And thus, the Myopia Master is a fully comprehensive documentation platform where all relevant things concerning myopia can be documented and monitored in one software. And for me, this is a really, really professional way of risk assessment. So thank you um, for listening to me today. And it really was a pleasure to speak to you. And uh, I hope you all want to get a myopia uh, pioneer. Thank you for your attention.